Welcome to the Total Wireless Store, where total confidence awaits. I need to keep up with my teens this summer without sweating high cell phone bills. Don't worry. You got this with Total Wireless. We have plans to fit all your family's needs starting at just $25 on the nation's best 4G LTE network. I won't miss a thing. Now you can focus on the important stuff, like arguing about curfew. Discover the Total Wireless stores and get total confidence. The latest phones, the best network, all at great prices. Now open in Miami. Refer to the latest terms and conditions of service at TotalWireless.com. Good evening, Metal Faithful. This is the Metal Hammer of Doom, and we are wishing you a happy Independence Day to all of our American American listeners out there, and to the rest of you around the world. How do you do? Um, today is July fourth, and we are celebrating American independence from. The British Empire, low some 200 plus years ago, by reviewing the most American American musician in the history of music, the one and only American badass, Kid Rock Bawa Da Bawa Dang a Dang Diggy Diggy. That's right. And here's a man who doesn't ba with the ba dang a dang diggy, but he ding a ding dangs his dang along ling long. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Call back. The, the, <laughs> the host of Source Material and the Disapproving Dad. He's my co host for the night, Mr. Jesse Starcher. How do you do? You know, when Neil Fallon asked the question, who wants to rock? First hand that is in the air is the man we're going to be talking about tonight. That's Kid Rock. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Boy, oh boy, are we going to celebrate 4th of July the right way by talking about this album right here, this artist right here. And as we saw in the Metal Hammer of Doom Extra, my goodness, this man is about as American and as about as rock and roll as they come. Indeed. Jesse, today was, of course, a day for family and barbecue and celebrating American independence. How did you celebrate your July 4th? Did you, did you grill some steaks? Did you drink some beer? Did you throw a keg? Was there mud wrestling? Was there a lot of underboob going on? Were you riding a motorcycle? Did you, were you wearing glittery pants out somewhere out in the desert? Did you ride a motorcycle over a house and blow, and blow yourself up? Did you do all the American American things that there are to do? Did you ride a four wheeler or a monster truck, sir? I Let have to you know. Something. About 90% of those things I really wished would have happened today. I'll tell you that much. I could always go for some underboob on the 4th of July, and I could do that <laughs> just about any day. But, hey, uh, I, I will tell you, I did grill a steak. I uh, had some hot dogs on the grill as well. had some mashed potatoes, uh, a little bit of broccoli, some le- lima beans, you know, just some good home American 4th of July meal. Sw- you know, follow that up with a Pepsi. No beer, unfortunately. I'm I'm busy taking care of the kids, so can't be uh, can't be 
Im- imbibing myself. Is that the right? Is that the right use of that word? Or how about can't be drinking uh, while I'm on the job here, ladies and gentlemen. So can't be drinking, stinking, never thinking. Matt, you do not want to be doing that, especially on the Fourth of July. Uh, so yeah, you know, I I celebrated a little bit. I didn't want to step outside because you know I didn't want to melt. It's hot as balls here in Ohio to where pavement is buckling. So I'm just going to go ahead and stay inside as much as I can. So that's that's how I did it. How about you, Mark Radlitz? What did you do for your 4th of July? We went to the in-laws. Uh, we, we swam in the pool for a bit. I enjoyed a low-carb adult beverage because I'm a fat ass on a low-carb diet, you see. Mm, and uh, Indeed, ketosis. Um and uh, we, you know, we had some homemade cheeseburgers where my father-in-law put the cheese inside the burger. Oh Mozzare- man, mozzarella, if you will. Nice. Uh, we had some hot dogs. We had a salad. We, had, you know, since you know, we're since we were all kind of doing the low carb thing to one degree or another. Not a whole lot. I mean, there was bread on the table if somebody wanted to, you know, put their hamburger on on a bun. But uh, for most of us, we just ate. We just forked and knived it. We had a salad, like I said. We had some mushrooms, some avocados, some pickles. Uh, I know one thing that we both did today. Mm-hmm. And we both sat down and watched that great night. Was a 1996 film? Independence Day, correct? Yes. I got up at 8 o'clock this morning. I slept the whole night, which is, you know, which is not something that normally happens. I'm usually up once or twice a night to pee or have a panic attack. One of the two. Um <laughs> <laughs> whichever <laughs> scheduled <laughs> yeah whichever, whichever's on whichever's on the agenda and i got it but i slept the whole night you know i got as soon as we were done two and a half hours talking about luke cage with freaking frack man it was oh, unbelievable boy. oh boy oh boy gavolts um and you <laughs> you can check out that that uh show want to call it a show we'll just I, I, did, it I was show. trying to use an adjective <laughs> <laughs> to describe the the great lengths that that show went to, um, oh my goodness! That gigantic podcast, a two and a half hour. I haven't done a two and a half hour long podcast in a long time. Yeah, yeah, I feel and, you. I'm there, trying bro. to keep them to ninety minutes or so, but yeah, that one just marathon. That's the word I was looking for. Ah, there you go. Okay. Yeah, because God, I can't I'm remembering things these days. It's getting harder and harder. I forgot Ronnie Adams' name last night, and it said it across my screen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Poor kid. Uh, I hope he didn't leave, let you live that down at all. Yeah, he made sure to like. I did a dramatic pause because I was trying to remember his name, and then I said it, and he wouldn't even go with it. Like he did not vamp at all. He was just like, "You forgot my name, you motherfucker!" And I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> god damn it." <laughs> anyway, um, so I slept all through the night. Uh, I went to bed at midnight, slept till eight o'clock in the morning, got up, let the wife sleep in a little bit more because you know, hey, only one of us is working, and that's me. But that's fine. I'll let her sleep in. And the kids were up, and, I, and they had their muffins in their juice, and I said, all right, kids, it's July 4th, and there's only one way to celebrate July 4th, fucking alien invasion, okay? Damn we, right. We, welcome to Earth, baby. Welcome to Earth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I made them watch, and uh, they did well with it, man. You know, they uh, they both sat and enjoyed it. They both freaked out during the, during the, the bit with the alien uh, surgery thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, she, my, dude, my daughter jumped so bad and was like, why are you making me watch this? Yep. It was so good. It's the reaction I was looking for. Um, <laughs> uh, I was right there with you, buddy. My, and, my then I son, there, my... and then I sit there, and then I sit there and wonder why on Facebook you referred to me as the ravenous ruiner of childhood. <laughs> I'm like, why would you say that? Oh, right. Why, cause... <laughs> why would I say that? No idea. So, but yeah, yes, you played it for yeah, your kids. I, I had a great time watching it as well. Caleb did. Caleb did pretty good. I, I think he stayed interested. Uh, man, I remember being so into that movie, and then he was out. Uh, he was he was checked out. Probably, I don't know, a, a good bit past the surgery, and that was about it. So, but I made him watch the whole damn thing because that's what dads do. Mark Radulich. Did Colton watch? Because I know, like, I know my son can't sit still for a movie to save his fucking life, especially when we're at home. But. Yeah. You know, so he was kind of in and out, but he was interested. Like, like basically, when there was dialogue or any sense of drama going on in Independence Day, and they and they weren't paying too close attention, I was like, whatever, they're not really going to get the subtext of what's happening here. 
But yeah. when there was action on screen, I was like, you, you got to watch this. This is important stuff here. It's the whole reason they put this movie on. Um, and my son definitely liked like the aerial battles and stuff, and he liked seeing the aliens get blown up. He was so funny when the when they brought down the, the, the when they brought down the saucers. My son started doing laps around the living room, going, "We killed the aliens! We killed the aliens!" <laughs> great, nice, very um, nice. So yeah, has- Colton, Colton did not. He he came in, watched for like ten minutes, and then fell asleep on the chair. So he was. It wasn't. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't enough to keep a four year old awake. Which damn. That's harsh. Um, I think Sunday night, we came home from whatever it was we were doing, and uh, I said, I said, all right, here's the deal. You can either go to bed, or you can watch a movie on the couch with me um, and stay up. Those are your choices. You can either go to bed now, or watch a movie with me, because, you know, in, in, in implied in all of that is you can't watch TV in your own room. You have to go to bed. But I will let you stay up if you watch a movie with me. And my daughter was, and my daughter was like, yeah, my bro-, and you know, her brother will do whatever her, the sister's doing most of the time. So Lily snuggled in next to me, and she's like, all right, what are we watching? I'm like, Thor Ragnarok. And Jonas, I don't think, made it past the scene with Surtur. No, oh, wow. <laughs> passed right the fuck out. Dang, that's right at the beginning. Yeah, he, he didn't last long. Um, and then slept. he slept on the couch, rolled off the couch, slept on the floor. Oh. <laughs> like a homeless well, person. Uh, I don't know, man. Things that used to do it for us, just don't do it for the kids anymore. We've yeah. said that before, but it's just the way it is. I was. Um, I don't know if you follow the Midnight's Edge YouTube uh, account, but they just did a post-mortem on the Solo movie, and one of the things they talked about is how Star Wars just isn't grabbing younger fans like it used to, um, and so things that things that uh, that were attractive and garnered a fan base thirty years ago um, don't necessarily garner fans um, expo- you know the new fans that are exposed to it at the rate that it used to because the world is a different place now. Yeah, which I thought was an interesting, which I thought was a really interesting thing to say about it. I mean, some of the stuff I agreed with what the, with what the guy was saying. Some of it, I think he's a little off base. But all right, um, so that's enough of our little uh, top of the top of the podcast conversation on what we did on our July fourth. <laughs> um, okay, all right. Well, let's get started. Uh, here is our first track off of Kid Rock's Sweet. Southern Sugar uh, that dropped November of 2017. We're getting around to doing it now because, as we said, there's no better way to celebrate Independence Day with, with, than with the American badass Kid Rock. So here we go with the greatest show on Earth.
All right, that was The Greatest Show on Earth by Kid Rock. Jesse Starcher, what do you think about that one? Oh, it's a good opener, man. I haven't heard anything from Kid Rock since shit. Man, we're talking like <laughs> 2000, 2000, <laughs> uh, uh, probably like the very early 2000s. Uh, since, what was it, The History of Rock, I think was one of the uh, the album, because uh, I was checking some of this stuff, his earlier stuff out that I remembered anyway. And Kid Rock... Uh, had uh, a, an album called uh, The History of Rock. Give me a second. I'm going to pull it up. But uh, yeah, but yeah, I think that was the one I was referring to as American Badass. What I meant mm-hmm. to say was that American Badass was the lead track off of History of Rock. Exactly. So anyway, you know, I didn't feel like there was much of a step lost. I really felt like this was a good rock and roll song. Now, you mentioned something about it being country. Uh, now, were they billing this album as a country album? Well, I happen to have the Wikipedia page up right now, and yeah, it's actually listed as both a rock and a country album. Okay. Well, I can definitely feel the rock. I don't know where country is going to come in here. There might be one or two songs you could probably say that that's it. There's definitely a country influence in here, but I mean, it would be like, I mean, if anything, it would be more of like a southern rock album. Yeah, like, um, or like an alt country kind of a thing, maybe like a heavier cracker that sort of thing. Take a look at uh, one of the Metal Hammer of Doom extras that we did, which I think was American Badass, where he lists a lot of his influences <laughs> <laughs> and <in> said song. <laughs> yes, so, he, yeah, he he was good enough to catalog that shit for us. <laughs> Here's what you're going to get. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so but I like it. I really. I dug this song, and I think this was the third one that we covered on the Metal Hammer of Doom Extra. Uh, again, that video just speaks to the amount of fame that this guy has gotten. Um, the song sounds amazing. like the song sounds like he wrote it specifically to promote a tour or the WWE or something oh, like absolutely. that. Oh, absolutely! Like you open you open every fucking concert with that song. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's what you do. That, that that I don't you know like I don't know what he what was going on in his head, but that is that is absolutely like a marketing person's dream th- theme. You know, it's like like yeah, this is exactly what we need to promote whatever it is that we're doing here. Uh, and so it's like less a song and more of a marketing theme, marketing yeah. uh, scheme. But uh, you know, it, look, it's catchy. It, look, Kid Rock stuff is all catchy. Yes, no, no matter how dumb it is. No matter, I mean, Kid, Kid Rock and... It, I want to see, like, Kid Rock and Ice-T do a coffee and cigarettes conversation. You know what I mean? Because it would be the dumbest thing on Earth. But it, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it would be well, awfully catchy. interesting. Yeah, it would absolutely be... It would be, like, car crash interesting. You know what I mean? All right, let's move on. Now, this next one. I... I I think I told you to check out the video for this because it's fucking hilarious. And I almost sent I almost wanted to do this one for the Metal Hammer of Doom, but I kind of wanted to keep focus on more of his uh on more of his title tracks and singles. Now, this was actually the first single that was released from this album. This is Podunk that was released on July 13th, 2017. The second single that he released was The Greatest Show on Earth, which is actually on the same date. I guess he released both of them. Okay, All then. Right. All right, then. Silly me. Uh, so, But if you haven't had the opportunity to check out the video for this yet, like, if you don't come away just hating white people, you, I don't understand. Like, I just don't get it. It's, it's, just, it's the most hilarious and both awful thing I've ever seen in my life. This, <laughs> <laughs> this is Poe Dunk. Daddy 
got a shotgun looking for a store. Oh, Lord. And that's And that's Jesse Starcher, what do you think about that one? Another catchy tune. I mean, now here I can see definite influences of country music. Sure. I mean, that's easy. You can see that all over it. How do you, how if you are anything but the poorest white trash, you not come away without thinking white people are just the worst? <laughs> <laughs> He's celebrating uh, the absolute worst amongst us. And it's a great tune, but it's just like, yeah, we're terrible and teeth and toothless. We've got no education. We have too many babies. We're awesome. Po dunk. Like, all right, uh, sure. They don't give a they don't give a flying hillbilly fuck, sir. Uh, no, they do not. They <laughs> do not. I am on. Uh, well, you know, I go over and check out some of the lyrics as we're uh, as we're going through the songs. I'm on Genius.com, and we actually have a. A contributor who decided to let us know what Podunk's all about. Oh. All right? So let's let's read. The track is about the hillbilly life. Now, actually, they put hilly, hilly billy life. Uh, so I don't know if that's a, a word that they use to describe themselves or if that's a, a just mistyped. But the, the track is about the hilly billy life and how great it is. And the music video is just the same. It includes such things like... Wait a second. This sounds familiar. Mud wrestling, <laughs> a fuck ton of American flags, <laughs> jeeps, trucks, lawnmowers, harmonicas, churches, and too many guns to count. You know, Kid Rock's usual stuff. The track was also synonymous with his announcement of running for the U.S. Senate in Michigan. In fact, part of the reason for him doing so was to generate some excitement for this new song. So I know that he's been kind of involved in politics recently i don't know anything about that he's um, like a hardcore republican okay well i could see that yeah i could <laughs> see that but uh but yeah i mean I, well it's funny because i was reading up a couple articles there uh oh i think it was about the release no it was actually about his uh drug ad- possible i wouldn't even call it a possible drug addiction because i mentioned on one of the metal hammer of doom extras that he isn't shy about talking about his addiction i'll tell you what i'm going to save that we will come back to that when we hit the song but there is he does speak about uh he he has spoken to reporters and and members of the media about drugs and i wondered how that affected his political views so we'll come back to that once we get to the i think it's I think it is. I don't know if it's Tennessee Mountaintop, which is the next song. We'll check it out and listen here. So, but yes, uh, Podunk, I like it. I'm still on board for this album, by the way. Oh, this is a great album. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I know sometimes it sounds like I'm just beating up on things, but I actually do really like this album. But as I've said before, I got to call the spade a spade, and it, it's like you hear that and it's catchy and I dig it, but it really it, it's like. It's just a, a reflection of, of the of the worst parts of of humanity and some of the worst parts of humanity, and it's like this is not something to be proud of. We should be better than this. This the po dunk is the theme to the idiocracy. <laughs> now I don't know. 
know if I would take it that far. I mean, there are plenty of people who live in, you know, plenty of people who live in Appalachia who have pissed off a porch many a time, <laughs> uh, and. <laughs> <laughs> and ha- have definitely done some mud, and that's a big thing around here. We do some mud every once in a while. Look, I'm not against mud, but hang on, let uh, me let me be clear. Someone is blowing okay. some shit up outside my door. Um, Fourth of I, July. I'm not, I'm not against mud. I am against having children you can't afford. Okay, all right. I'm not against four wheeling. I am against. <laughs> I, I I am against not being able to better yourself and you know and just I don't know living off non nothing. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, I mean, I I feel you there. I understand where you're coming from, and you know, there's no reason to look down upon the podunk people. I, I don't know what your problem is, Mark Rylis, but whatever. All right, uh, we, we can move on. Would not be the first. <laughs> would not be the first time I was called. Uh, what was it? What 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 was the, some of the comments you got on YouTube? I was like stuck up or something. Uh, Oh gosh! Whoa. Um, I I think uh, at one point you were. Are you an elitist? Something you are like an elitist. that. Yeah, okay. I, I think I got called an elitist, or at least something something like that. Whatever. All right. So the next song is called Tennessee Mountain Top. Better ask somebody. Sunset like fire on the fire for room. Oh, let me hold up at the bar. Johnny Depp picking on an old guitar. Man, I wish so Keith would have taught him how to keep in two. I came here looking for love, but all I found was sex and drugs. Strung out, broke down, homesick, and thinking of you. There ain't nothing like a Tennessee mountain top. Some straight shooting neighbors that don't name drop. With a preacher man praying for peace, but still packing a gun. You better ask somebody. Singing karaoke in a double wide. We smoke so A little bit of gospel there for you, a little bit of country, a little bit of rock and roll, a little bit of soul. Tennessee Mountaintop. Son, I'll take care of it here in just a few minutes. If anybody can't tell, I am I am on a staycation right now, and my wife and my daughter are at the beach. Therefore, this being the third podcast in a row for the week, <laughs> there is there is I think my my sons have decided that nine o'clock is time to run around upstairs, act all crazy, and ask dad for just about everything. I could sit down here for six hours during the day and not hear a peep. But then, once the sun goes down, 
Uh, oh, all the shit. ones come out. The freaks come out at night. The freaks <laughs> come right. out at night. At night. The freaks come out at night. Sing it. Uh, so let's listen. Let me tell you a little bit. I like that song, by the way. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it's nice and laid back. Uh, you, you mentioned gospel. Love, love that bit in there. Um, I cannot do that right now. Give me just a second. Wait till the next song here, and then we'll take care of it. Why don't you just bring him on the podcast? Ask him uh, what they think of his uh, sweet Southern sugar. He has no clue. He, <laughs> he what he would be. What, he wouldn't be more. He wants me to go turn off the TV and get his iPad. That's that is all that he has in his brain right now. No mm-hmm. matter what. All right. So listen, Kid Rock and and Drug Edition. Because there's a point in this song where he says uh, he was on the. I think it's where he said he was on the bathroom floor asking God to see him through. So one of the articles that I looked at to see if there had been any mention of him being addicted to drugs or anything like that, I found this one article where it said that Kid Rock cannot fathom, it was something along the lines that he cannot fathom people being addicted to drugs. So it's... I don't know if he's ever been to rehab. He did mention that he does have an alcohol problem, but he's like, you know, he can't fathom people like not being able to quit uh, like cocaine and, and heroin and stuff like that. He, one of the things he mentioned was like, you know, a lot of people, yeah, they get, they may get addicted to it, but most people just, you know, do that for one night of fun. Uh, so I think Kid Rock. I don't know if he has demons, but if he does, uh, they don't seem to have as bad a hold on them, uh, on him, as, uh, I mean, he would make it sometimes sound. Of course, his, most of his music glorifies <laughs> drug use <laughs> and alcohol use, uh, but, you know, I'm sure he's probably been uh, scared a few times, but again, I just saw that recently, so, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, interesting song. I, I like the, I, I like the topic, the subject matter in it, and I also love, you know, you, you better ask somebody, because that preacher, he's got a gun, but he's preaching that peace. You better ask somebody. All right, let's move this party along here. This next song is called "I Wonder, 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 Wonder Who." Who? Do, 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 do. Who wrote Bo- the book of love? That's right. Who wrote the book of love? All right, so you're going to think I'm crazy, but I hear Michael Jackson in that song. <laughs> no, you hear Prince is what you hear. You're right. I hear Prince. <laughs> you are absolutely right. I don't know. You 110. But you know what I hear in that song? I hear Prince. That's 100%. The, I mean, as soon as you hear that, that funky guitar, mm-hmm. you're just like, okay, yeah, throw me it throws me right into what I've heard of Prince. I haven't heard like any of the B-side stuff. I, I imagine it's got to be very similar to what we hear here though. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Um, good stuff. I mean, it's a bit of a boogie woogie in that one. There is buddy. And it's, you know, the other thing is, is it is, a, it's kind of like a love song. You know, this guy that has missed, is missing out on <laughs> Colton. 
You're killing me. It's in there on the couch, bro. Go upstairs. This is quickly becoming the Jesse Parenting podcast. I I will throw something. It's on the couch in. <laughs> it's on the blue couch in the living room. We have I'm, two couches in there. Look on both. I'm a little jealous that your children keep wanting to spend time with you during this podcast, and mine are dead asleep. I feel like I should go wake them up. No, no, my. my yeah. It's not that they want to spend time with me, Mark Radlich. It's they're they want something, and I am apparently the only parent in this house that can get it, and that is the truth. There's nobody else here but me. I'm 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 alone, Mark Radlich. You see, <laughs> where's my <laughs> wife? I want my wife back from the beach now. I told my daughter tonight. I said, I really wish you were here so you could take Colton into your room and hang out for a little bit. What are you doing, Colt? Oh, you're coming down here. Okay, well, that's great. All right, well, as long as you're quiet, that's fine. As long as you're quiet. <laughs> let's, see uh, little, let's see you little bastard. Shut up. I'm trying to do a podcast that's, here. That's all I ask. That's <laughs> all I ask. So, anyway, uh, yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a love ditty about some girl that, you know, he's obviously lost connection with. But, yeah, you... A funky, funky guitar in there made me immediately think of Prince. So, I, yeah. and I, I, I dug it too. Yep, yeah, I was digging the disco boogie, boogie woogie. All right. Boogie, boogie. Speaking of the American badass and the greatest show on earth, this here is American rock and roll. That's a gorgeous song right there. You know, any song that that shows an appreciation for music without just, you know, reading off your iTunes playlist is uh, is really nothing. (laughs) (laughs) There we go. Um, (laughs) Any any song that really is is just about the appreciation of music. You know, I go back to the Legends of Tomorrow episode where they were with Elvis and. Steel was going on about you know how music is embedded in our lives and you know and it's it's the soundtrack to events and, and all this other stuff and how important music is you know when I listen to American rock and roll you know I definitely get the I mean I, I kid and I joke about Kid Rock you know writing idiotic lyrics and, and and everything else but then he comes up with this and it's like okay I get it dude you know I I I get that you are a real musician. And you have a real thirst for music. 
And that might, more than anything else is why I appreciate Kid Rock for what he does, no matter how much the pendulum swings from utter idiocy to some pretty awesome music. Yeah, this song kind of exemplifies some of the great stuff that he can put out there. Number one, you just listen to... I would pretty much put this in the category of a country song about a rock about rock and roll. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so you listen to a country song about rock and roll, which I don't know if that's a brand new concept or not, but hey, uh, that makes it interesting. And number two, you hear them singing pipes on this guy? Yeah. I mean, he, I mean they really shine here. I, it's, I, I kept thinking about, like, this is the guy that, like, if I didn't know any better, you would have a hard time convincing me this was the same guy that said, ba with da ba with dang a dang diggy yep. diggy Exactly. Well, I mean, we've come a long way. Uh, you know, oh, man, can you imagine that dude that's almost 20 years old now yeah Whew. gosh dang and i want to be a cowboy baby <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i'll be celebrating my 20th anniversary coming up on the 18th of july which means that me and the wife had been married a year when baba to ba got dropped so wow uh, i was gonna say did you did was that your was that your first dance baba to ba <laughs> Yeah, put that on, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that reminds me of the can. We got another metal hammer, hammer of doom in the can for fucking November rain that I've never got out there yet. <laughs> That's right. We made such a great joke about the cake too. And, uh, <laughs> I'll never forget it. <laughs> uh, just Jesse's just sitting on content. He was just like, oh, "I'm gonna, guys. I'm gonna dribble a little bits out here and there." <laughs> you have no idea. No clue. It's funny because we go in, we go into those extras with three songs on our mind. Okay, we got these three videos, and then we got that one, and then we have that one. Till finally, we just recently made the decision. Okay, let's pre-record some instead of going off the beaten path like we normally do and get some more in the can. But yes, uh, we have so much, so much stuff. We uh, which reminds me, are you there. ever going to do anything with the one of, of me and my kids watching the thriller video? Uh, it's it's there. I don't know okay. if I've got. I mean, at some point maybe we should. That was the one where Lily was like, "Okay, I'm out. There, no, this is too <laughs> scary for me. No, no, thank you." Yeah, I made her watch the whole thing. <laughs> if I remember correctly, we made some pretty inappropriate jokes. <laughs> <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, inappropriate on the metal hammer of doom. The devil, you say? Never, never. All right, this one's called "Back to the Other Side." Sweet sounds of the seventies. <laughs> you can feel that, can't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a this is a weird album, man. Because like you know, again, Kid Rock started as I mean, it, granted, you know, as much as we focus on Ba with the Ba, I I also mentioned Cowboy earlier, and that was a very different song than Ba with the Ba. But you know, that's the thing. Kid Rock just kind of just looks at the entire landscape of music and says, "Now I want to do this, and I want to do this," yeah. and it's very hard to pigeonhole him. Yeah, you can't, and that's good. I mean, that is that's the mark of a good artist who can take and you know their style and merge it with just about any you know, almost any genre, uh, which is you know that's that's great work. Um, I do want to 
give a shout out to this song as it being one of the most positive songs on this album. Uh, this is a anti-suicide song. If you listen to the lyrics, it's very, you know, it's very uplifting. Uh, one of the more positive songs as we probably heard this year on the Metal Hammer of Doom. Uh, but it's it's clearly about talking somebody back from, uh, you know, taking their own life and you know, hence come back to the other side, get on, get on the other side of that wall and that bridge or whatever. It's, it's good. It's really good content for, and it, and it is a laid back song, <laughs> sweet sounds of the seventies, but man, it's, it's catchy. It's all get out. You know, I can, I can definitely see somebody listening to this podcast or seeing that we did kid rock on this podcast, specifically this album going, that's not metal. And they're not wrong. And no. I would not classify this in any way, shape, or form as metal. But like I said, we're having fun on the Metal Hammer of Doom tonight. We're doing a little something off the beaten path. So, that you know, and occasionally that's what we do here. Not everything has to be Marduk. You know, not everything has to be Cradle of Filth. Sometimes that's you, right. Sometimes you need a little sweet Southern sugar in your life, Jesse Starcher. Amen to that, bro. Amen. All right. Speaking of things you need in your life, this is Raining Whiskey. There's a place I can't go back to anymore My life is different now, that's for sure You took all my sun away And now the sky is turning gray it's a whole new world since you walked out the door. It's been brain and whiskey, pouring beer. There's a thunder in jukebox in my ear. I feel a great depression coming on. It's been brain. Jesse Starcher. Uh, I feel uh, like that's the song that should be playing at the end of, you know, like a, a drama series, you know, like like the end of The Wire or something, you know, or Justified, as they're run, doing a montage of, you know, things that, are, that happened after the, seri- the season ended, you know, right before the credits, like this is what they would play. Oh, I feel, I understand where you're coming from. The... You know, we, we talk about how is this album country or not? I believe there's definite elements of that you could feel it all over this album. But one of the things I want to make sure to point out to people is that a song may be considered country just because of the subject matter them, uh, itself. And some dude getting drunk because some woman leaves, that is country to the fucking T. <laughs> yeah, I, so. I'm kind of, like, as much as I, I miss him when he's not on the show and he's a, he's an important part of it, I'm kind of glad Robert Cooper is not on tonight's show because he probably would have hung himself by this point. Yeah, it's, he wouldn't enjoy this album at all. No. it It's, but yeah, I can see this being something that pops up in a TV show pretty easily. Yep. Uh, again, you know, Kid Rock flexing his singing pipes in this. And, I mean, uh, the southern rock elements you got the 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 backup 
singers there that kind of pop in there every once in a while. I totally had like a Little Shop of Horrors vibe. Yes. <laughs> yes. Shoop. Shoo doo. Shoo be doop. <laughs> That's good stuff. Do 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 do. All right. Let's let's start to get uh closing out here. This is Stan the Pain. That was Stan the Pain by Kid Rock. So, according to the wiki, uh, it, this is the 11th studio album by Kid Rock. And uh, it's won four singles, Podunk, Greatest Show on Earth, Tennessee Mountaintop, and American Rock and Roll, uh, all of which had music videos. Podunk, Jesse Starcher, actually peaked at number 27 on the Hot Country Songs. <laughs> great, wow. great you know, country, country <laughs> listeners have definitely... Uh, you know, and by golly, I'm not one to criticize or uh, say that I am a country listener, but I do know just by, uh, you know, Gavin Napier's posts, the country is definitely going a different uh, route, I would yeah, say, nowadays. It's, it's becoming alt rock uh, or all country. Isn't that something? It, well, I can't, you know, again, white people, you know, we like what we like. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Uh, Greatest Show on Earth peaked at 16 on the mainstream rock chart and is used as the main theme for WWE Survivor Series 2017. Tennessee Mountaintop peaked at number 36 on the Hot Country Songs. The album's title comes from a lyric in Tennessee Mountaintop. The album also features a cover, which we'll get to momentarily, of the four top song, Can't Help Myself. Now, uh, as far as reviews, uh, All Music gave it three out of five stars, and the, the Detroit Free Press said it was favorable. Um, so... On the uh, top rock albums, Billboard, it peak position was number one. Top country albums, Billboard, number four. Independent albums, number one. U.S. Billboard 200, number eight, as I said before. Um, and then the, in the rest of the world that, it, that were charted, it didn't get any higher than 10, which was uh, New Zealand Heat Seekers. So, yeah, not, no, definitely not bad. Not bad at all. I think that's... Uh, you know, as for Stan the Pain, it's it's a great, another great positive song. Him flexing the singing voice, it definitely feels. 
I got a kind of wanted Dead or Alive Bon Jovi vibe from it. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, ah, uh, yeah. Now, I could see that, and and it's as far as the rest of the songs go on this album. This one is probably one of the more background songs, in my opinion. So uh, it, it doesn't feel like it stands out. What What's funny to me is like pretty much since Podunk, which was the second song on here, it's all been kind of laid back country type songs. Every single mm-hmm. one of them. There, you know, like Greatest Show on Earth. You know, was a pure rock and roll song. Podunk, you know, had definitely that rock and roll kid rock element to it. And then everything else after that's been country. And now we're going to get into a cover of uh, of a doo-wop song. <laughs> Which is something that I did not see coming. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mom, I hope you're listening out there because I know you love your doo-wop. This is Sugar Pie Honey Bunch. Sugar pie, honey bunch. <laughs> so where I was, what I was getting to with this is, if you were, I mean, I don't know what the other preceding, like, eight or nine kid rock albums were like, but, you know, if, if you're like me and there's this huge gap between history of rock and this one, you're like, what the hell happened to kid rock? <laughs> What the fuck? Sure, sugar Pie Honey Bunch? Motherfucker's covering that? Yeah, it's just the whole album, really. But it it ends it ends pretty hardcore. This next one, this last song of the night, and we're going to get out of here. Oh, boy. I've got some lyrical content to bring to you, sir. <laughs> um, I love this song. <laughs> this song. This song is fantastic. Fucking fantastic! This, this is the, this is what we came to a Kid Rock album for. Absolutely, I was listening to this and I was like, "Yes, this is what I wanted when I decided to do a Kid Rock album. This is what we this is what we came here for. This is my favorite track off this album. It is far better than Greatest Show on Earth or Podunk or anything else on here. Why didn't this get released as a single? <laughs> oh, oh Sugar Pie Honey Bunch." Fuck off. Yeah. This is this is grandpa's jam. Here we go. No, I hate your bro, so don't call me brother. Cause hoes they know I'm one bad motherfucker. Team Supreme, so fresh, so please, so pro, you know. 
know I'm like me, Joe Green. Pass the peas, hold the cheese. You can roll with rock or you can swing on these. These, these, these nuts. Rocking all you bitches with the old school cuts. So please, please, please shut up. I got a lot of love, but I'm all out of fucks. Rolling like the Doobie Brothers. Doing it my way, rocking down the highway. Rolling right through you suckers. Lame duck bitch ass broke my fuckers. Some good shit, Jesse Starch. Woo wee! This is how you finish an album. Yeah, this buddy. Finish, this is how you finish a Kid Rock album. Too. Holy mean, my gosh. shit! Oh, that's the good stuff right here. I'll tell you. Uh, I, I just realized that the reason why it's called Grandpa's Jam is because Kid Rock is a grandpa now. And yeah. <laughs> Let that one sink in for a second. <laughs> he is a grandpa. But my gosh, I mean, can you not get past some of these lyrics? I mean, I'll... Lay them on me, Big Daddy. Lay them on me. Well, first off, the first set of lyrics that Rolling Stone decided to actually lead off their article about this album with is from Grandpa's Rap. And it goes like such. I'll fuck you in your ass quick with Taylor Swift's dick. Indeed. Yes. Yes. We did get to, probably got to hear a little bit about that. Uh, you know, we got. So fuck Lady Luck. I don't need her around. Wolfgang Puck. I ain't fucking around. Okay. <laughs> Wolfgang Puck. <laughs> Sorry. Just awesome. Here we are naming names again. Uh, yeah. Just because we like to name them. King of the uh, list. And... Kid Rock. <laughs> yes, dude. He is king of the list. Oh, wow. So, yeah, buddy. I mean, I, I, the pure hardcore thrift store antiquer. <laughs> they call me Ridge Reaper, the Stone Cold Creeper. <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. But this is the greatest song off of this album, probably. Yeah, no, this I, is, I, I, again, like, when I, I go back to, I, I'm looking at some of the other albums. Like, I remember Cocky now. Like, some, some of the stuff's coming back to me all summer long. Um, I that was that was another one that was associated with the WWF, uh, WWE. You know, like so. So over the years, like I absolutely do remember some Kid Rock stuff coming into the mainstream and, and penetrating. I just don't remember. I just never went out and listened to the albums necessarily. Um, with that being said, <laughs> that being said, you know. This is the kid rock. I mean, as much as I can appreciate this other stuff, and I've said before, like, you know, bands want to, you know, experiment with other sounds and evolve or whatever. I'm all for that. But you know, there is a certain pleasure in, in hearing the pure, authentic, you know, what you came to the dance for. Exactly. You know, and it's just like, there's no, there's no space between Ba with the Ba and this. Like, Grandpa's Jam could have been on Devil Without a Cause. No, no problem. I agree 100%. Oh, uh, wow. It is a great one to send us off to, man. I mean, the last line, so motherfucker, don't be fucking with Grandpa. <laughs> Bravo. Bravo. And if you are a wordsmith and a half, sir. Please more, please list more shit in your songs. Um, oh, wait. I forgot the my favorite part of this song is I rock harder than your Meemaw's chair. 
That's the greatest part of this whole song. Oh, uh, wonderful. I, I, I hope to be half as cool when I'm a grandpa. Um, Please. All right. I want to get out of here right quick. So next week on the Metal Hammer of Doom, we'll be reviewing uh, Lords of Black, Icon of the New Days. Uh, Jesse Stark, you ever hear about them before? Is that uh, you know anything about Lords of Black? No, never heard of them. All right, well, you're going to get an education. I'm going to play the song that got me into them. Uh, the song that got me into them uh, for the first time. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We're all, I'm off a week. Next week, July 11th, Big Tings, Jesse Starcher. <laughs> big Tings. Big baby. Tings, baby. <laughs> oh, my God. You got Big Tings. I got Big Tings. We got Big Tings to discuss. Skindred. Uh, new album. If you don't know what Skindred is, they're a reggae metal band. They're fucking awesome. Definitely, I, I'm I'm sad I only knew about their cover of Electric Avenue. Have you ever heard it? I think I have. Yeah. And it may have been something that you played. Um, well, then the following week is uh, is Lords of Black, Icon of the New Days. And then uh, we're taking a week off, probably, because I'll be at fucking Dave Matthews. And then... Yeah. Mm, yep. And then we'll finish off the month with uh, D. Snyder for the love... Of rock and roll, brilliant! I'm oh, sorry brilliant. for the love of metal. So uh, oh, the, okay. our me- our metal hammer of doom extras will be some twisted sister for yes. That'll be fun. All right, Jesse, just go ahead and take us home, baby. Let's get out of here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, go give the Rattlech in Broadcasting Network Facebook page a like to stay up on top of all the great podcasts that we have to offer. Just as I've mentioned probably like 20 times throughout this podcast, me and Mark Rattlech come together on Sundays to record some stuff for the Metal Hammer of Doom Extra. So if you maybe want to check out our commentary on some of the videos that the artists that we're featuring here on this here said show uh go check out the source material youtube page and there's a playlist they're all put together for you ladies and gentlemen you can start with ministry and work your way on down make sure to leave a comment on every single video that you watch bad good or indifferent uh we we will i guess accept them with somewhat uh decency uh, i may have deleted one off of there but hey that's all right because <laughs> <laughs> i may be i may i may have too soft of a heart sometimes when it comes to being too rough on me so if you, you if know, you say if you call Jesse a faggot and tell him to delete his his youtube page you're going to get deleted let me just try and say that i might oh man so anyway uh yeah check that out ladies and gentlemen i i uh i think that's all that's all we're gonna do i want to get out of here and enjoy the rest of my fourth of july i got 20 minutes to 11 here on the east coast maybe it might be about 90 degrees outside now i don't no. know i might be able to step outside and, and not melt jesse's jesse's kids are demanding his attention so <laughs> everyone jesse starcher have yourself a happy independence day and thank to- you you too And to the rest of you, be well, be safe, and behave. Welcome to the Total Wireless Store, where total confidence awaits. Our daughter's off to summer camp, and we're worried our network coverage won't reach her. Don't worry. You got this with Total Wireless. Our phones run on the nation's best 4G LTE network. It'll be like she never left. The nation's best network? I feel better already. Now you can focus on how you're spending your summer. Discover the Total Wireless Stores and get total confidence. The latest phones, the best network, all at great prices. Now open in Miami. Refer to the latest terms and conditions of service at TotalWireless.com.